Hey everybody, I hope you're having a good day today. Windows and Mac works for me. Why should I try Linux? I get this question asked a lot, and sometimes it's just plain out said. Windows and Mac work for me? I'm not even going to think about Linux. I'm not a developer, or I'm not a geek or a hacker. You don't have to be a geek or a hacker, one, to use Linux. You just have to be somebody that wants a change. One of the main reasons I use Linux is for the simple fact it's free, and it's free as in freedom. It's free to use. I have choice. I can change uh, the distros I use. I can go a different direction. I can use different desktops. I mean, if you go over to DistroWatch, uh, you've got a hundred different Linux distributions listed over here to the right, and that's just probably a third, maybe a quarter of the distributions that are available. And then that's when people in my comments will go, there's too much choice in Linux. There's just too much to go through. No, there isn't. That's one of the beauties of Linux is having that choice, having the option to go with a window manager or maybe KDE or GNOME or Cinnamon or Mate, whatever you might want. You can change it up. You can add flavor to your computer. You can customize it for you. You can make your personal computer your personal computer. You can't do that with Windows and Mac. You can change light, dark modes. You can change a little bit of the theming here and there, but pretty much you've got to ride with what Apple or Microsoft tells you you're going to ride with, and that's it. So obviously the freedom of choice, free is in free, and I think a lot of people overlook that. But then I have a lot of people come into my comments and go, yeah, it's free, so then it's crap. And that's another thing. When you really look at it, a lot of the times when people don't want to go to Linux, it's because they're bound or they're held in by a certain piece of hardware, like a CAD application, or some people just have to have the Adobe suite. There are specific things like that, or maybe you're in the enterprise uh, sector and you have to have Microsoft Exchange or something like that. It's something that keeps you handcuffed into it, but you don't necessarily need to be handcuffed at home. That's what I'm talking about. And really, let's be honest, sometimes people just don't like change. They don't want to take that extra 10, 15, 20 minutes to sit there and learn a different application and actually learn something. That's what I like to do every day. I like to learn something new every day, no matter if it's a tiny thing or maybe it's something major. I want to learn something. I want to educate myself. I want to get out of my comfort zone. I don't want to be bound by big corporations to say, this is the laptop you're going to use, or this is the phone you're going to use, and this is the way you're going to use it, and you can't change that in any way. This is what we're dictating to you. That's the beauty of Linux. And that's just one of the reasons I like using it. Now, another thing I get a lot of the time is I get comments that say it just doesn't have the applications. I really want to just scream from the top of my lungs that Linux has thousands upon thousands of applications, open source applications that you can use. There's even proprietary software. If you have to have it, you can use. You can integrate it into Linux and you can not miss a beat. But then once I point that out, here's another thing that I get. And this one's the one I really like. The names of the applications are stupid. What the hell is a GIMP? Guys, I mean, come on. GNU Image Manipulation Program. I mean, how hard is it? Who cares what the name of an application is? Does it do what you want it to do? Yes. Can you use it? Yes. Was it easy to learn? Yes. Then use it. Why do people have to complain about such minor things? And this is what I'm talking about, the change. People don't want to go with the change. That's what they're scared of. They don't want to do anything different or anything that's going to take uh, effort above and beyond what they're used to to learn it. And now I'm not saying that's everybody, but certain people out there, that's the way it is. They just want to open that new iPhone or new uh, Surface laptop, open it up, push a button and go, okay, everything's there right where I want it. They don't care what else is going on. And they really don't care about the way Windows 11 collects your information. All the telemetry that you're giving it. Everything, all the information that you're feeding it. Who you are, what you do, how you do it. Um, you guys don't understand that with these types of people and corporations, they know when you get up, they know where you eat, they know where you bank, they know where you work, they know what time you go to work, they know what time you get home from work. They know what your favorite searches are. They know what kind of movies you like. They have all of this data and they market to you that way. Some people just don't mind it. Me, I'm not in for that. I don't want them to know anything about me that they don't need to know. 
And of course, Mac's doing the same thing. They're doing data collection as well. So, I mean, that's one of the major things that turns me off is the fact that it's not free. It's not freedom. Uh, there's a lot of telemetry inside of Windows and Mac, and they just track everything that you do. So if you're a user, at the end of the day, you really got to ask yourself, is my information worth this? Because it's not, because Windows isn't free. If you've got an old key, you can use it. But if you don't, you end up having to pay for it. And, you know, it's just more control over you as the user. And that's one of the things I have a hard time with. Now, a lot of stuff that I've been talking about in the last couple of months is chat GPT and things like that. This is another reason I like Linux, because let me tell you something. I'm sitting right here at my desktop. I have no data collection happening right now. There's nothing being tracked on me. Zero. I'm not having any of my information phoning home to a Linux server somewhere going, this is Troy Holt of eBuzz Central. These are the websites he likes. I mean, it's not that. I don't have to worry about that. I don't have to worry about this tuxedo computer tracking me, which I love, by the way. So let's go ahead and open this up. Other than the tracking, here we go. Reinventing search with a new AI-powered Microsoft Bing and Edge. I've talked about Copilot in the last couple months about how it was scraping GitHub and stealing open source code. They just kept right on going with it. Not a problem. Chat, B Chat GPT has been integrated into Microsoft Bing and Edge now. And if you're a Windows user, it'll soon be on your desktop everywhere. And it doesn't matter. They're eventually going to integrate this into the operating system. So it doesn't matter what you do or how you do it. Microsoft's going to know everything about you. And not only that, they're going to know what kind of things you like to create, what kind of code you like to create, what you like to do. And they're going to have a track of that. They're going to track it all with the AI and people are going to feed into it. They're going to just get into this AI and they're going to be typing all kinds of things in here and it's just going to feed this AI engine and just, it's just going to be unreal guys. And I don't know if you think I'm just a conspiracy theorist or not, but I'm not. It's, it's just a fact. And, and a lot of the people out there that are already using Linux and care about privacy know this. Now, another thing that they've come up with is they've got the DALI visual creation tool where you just type in what you want it to make your artwork look like and it'll spit it right out and they're integrating that into Edge and Bing. It used to be you just opened a web browser just to go search and find something on the web. Now, when you open that web browser, it takes down all of your information. It knows who you are. It knows what you like to look at. It knows your sexual preference. It knows what kind of shopping you like to do, whether you like to go through Amazon, you use credit cards, and now it's going to be able to figure out your mentality of different things that you like to do based on the AI and based on Dolly, the visual creation tool. We're just feeding it more information. And if you can't see that that's an issue, I know that a lot of people out there will go, the AI is going to be helpful for people in business and this and that and the other. But you got to weigh those. Usually when you sit down to make a decision in your life, you write down the pros and cons. There's a lot more cons in this column than there are pros. If you disagree with me, put that in the comments below. Now, for the last couple months, Microsoft's been banging all this AI stuff out. Google didn't want to be left behind. So now you can try out their Bard, which is a chat GPT rival. So we're going to have this integrated into Chrome and Edge before long. And it's just going to be sucking up information as quick as you can give it to them. And I just think this is so wrong on so many levels. But I know I'm going to have user, viewers out there that say, hey, it's not wrong. Here's the pluses. Here's the minuses. You know, drop that in the comments below. All I know is when I close this window right here, even when it's open, Firefox does very minimal tracking. I don't have to worry about my websites being tracked. I don't have to worry about my computer being tracked. I'm on Linux. I'm not feeding the Windows ecosystem. I'm not feeding the Mac OS ecosystem nor am I feeding the Android or iPhone ecosystem. I have an open source phone. I have an open source computer and everything just runs smooth and the data collection on me has completely stopped. I'm pretty sure they get a piece here and there, but compared to others out there that just feed it like a monster on a daily basis, we're heading into a dangerous territory and I know I'm going to have viewers out there agree with me and definitely have viewers that disagree with me. If you do disagree with me or hey, if you do agree with me, let me know what you think in the comments below. Do me a favor before you leave today. Please like the channel. Likes keep me in YouTube's algorithm, which means if you found the information in this video helpful, somebody else out there might as well. And subscribe. Doesn't cost anything. And if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. As always, 
Thank you for watching my video and I will see you in the next video.